Everybody get a copy of our schedule. Yeah, if you did, you'll have to share it with Rodell. No, you haven't. I have it right out. It's still here. <laughs> okay. Who's missing one? Hey. Well, come on closer on the side so you can hear me. Pat, you seat up here. Yes. Want a seat up here? <laughs> we have five empty chairs in yeah. front. Wings. They're only a nickel apiece. <laughs> I'll take two. Here, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, <laughs> you have three more chairs. Anybody want to? <laughs> yeah, two more back there. No one more. Yeah. Yeah. Say your first name. Yeah, that's right. Okay, since I can't get anybody to move, <laughs> you'll have to hear me talk. Church, Joe. What? <coughs> All your cell phones on vibrate or turned off. Oh. <laughs> this is a Fiesta performance. You have to turn off cell phones. <laughs> I thank you all for coming to celebrate Jean's life. She was an interesting woman. I was married to for 57 years. And even at this late stage, she can still pull off surprises for me. <laughs> Last December. She had a surprise birthday party for me at the airfield. And she really did a good job of keeping me from knowing. There are many stories I could tell you about Jean, but there's a few that I've told before, but I'll tell it for the last time. Jean was a night person. I'm a morning person. <laughs> <laughs> we went to Oklahoma State together. So she'd take course in the afternoon, I'd take my courses in the morning. The Air Force sent me there and there was a hundred Air Force officers approximately. And we knew them all. And we didn't wear a uniform. So we got together for lunch and if I wasn't there yet, she would sit with one of the other Air Force officers. Well, it was a bunch of Arab students. And one of them looked over he saw this good-looking woman every day with a different guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he figured there was some action going on, and he wanted a piece of the action. So he came over and propositioned Jean. And I told Jean that I could have swapped her for a camel. <laughs> and her answer was, I'd be living in a tent right now with all kinds of jewels over in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> so... She had a good sense of humor. She was majoring in English literature, but she had to take these required math courses. And she had this math instructor that he wasn't too keen on doing math problems. So every night she'd come home with these problems and I'd show her how to solve them. And she'd go to class the next day and the instructor would say, anybody want to work this one out at the board, should leap up. And she always ended it by saying, this is the way my husband did it. <laughs> <laughs> the whole semester. Did you get an A? <laughs> yes, she got all A's. Did you get an A? <laughs> I'll jump ahead. I got all A's, and she would tell 
all the officers, the only reason why I got all A's is she did my homework. <laughs> and the trouble is, they believed her. <laughs> so anyways, in her math class, the last day on the way out, she said, oh, by the way, you'll get my husband next semester. He sits in the front row and he asks questions with Mark. <laughs> so he was waiting for me. She was taking English Lit. In the final exam in English storytelling, she had to write a story. The professor walks in, gives her a title, and she has to write a complete short story in 40 minutes. The, tie, the title was, it, Pride Goeth Before the Fall. And this is what she wrote. In Africa, there was a pride alliance. They were trying to figure out a way to make money. After many suggestions, they decided to cut off hair from their mane, weave it into coasters, and sell it to the tourists. It was a bestseller. So they repeated it again. Cut off some more mane, made coasters, sold out. They did it the third time, but they're running out of mane. Winter was coming. It was getting cold. Hence, pride goeth before the fall. <laughs> he gave her a D. <laughs> she had to go up and explain to him it was the pride of lions. It was cold and going to south. She finally got a change to an A. <laughs> Now, oh, here's one. Any no children here? Good. Oh, yes. Yeah. You just block your ears. <laughs> I used to study in the basement of the library. And she used to study at home with the three kids. Well, she decided she wanted to give me an anniversary gift. And we wanted to like, yeah, I don't need anything. So she went to a wood shop and asked for a 9-inch by 9-inch board with a knot hole and knocked the knot hole out. That was strange. Then she went to her German instructor who was a hunter and asked if she had any rabbit fur which she used to line it. Oh no. And for my anniversary gift I got a genuine fur line knot hole. <laughs> <laughs> she made all A's like me. We said bets on them. Make all A's and as a result we would get invited to the president's honor list for those that made straight A's for two semesters. And I told Jean, I'm going to walk up with her behind me. He's going to say, well, Alan, congratulations. Jean, congratulations. And he's going to say, oh, you two married? And I'm going to say, no, sir, we just lived together. <laughs> and Jean said, you're not going to do that. You're not going to do that. So we went up there. President Alan, congratulations. Jean, congratulations. Oh, you two lived together? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Well, she graduated with all A's. She was inducted into the Liberal Arts Honor Society, and then she continued on in the master's program for library science. She first started a library in the town of Berwyn Heights, where she was honored by the town for starting the library and keeping it going. Then she went to work in Prince George's Library in Laurel, Maryland. finished OSU, I was stationed at the National Security Agency. Don't tell me you don't know what that is now. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of it. Since it made all the papers. And that's where Jean learned to fly. They had a flying club and uh, she got her pilot's license there. An instructor taught us some aerobatics, so she did spins and loops and rolls. And, uh, when she was learning to fly, she asked me, she was going to do a stall. A stall is when you pull the nose up, the aircraft flip when it's flying, things can happen. I said, really easy, just push the wheel forward until you recover. I pushed it all the way forward, almost straight down. Ooh, down. <laughs> Emptied out the ashtrays, scared the hell out of the instructor. <laughs> but I also taught her how to navigate. Since I was a navigator, we just using two fingers and a watch. You didn't need all this exotic equipment. When I was working at CIA, I needed a helicopter for some government research. 
and they gave me the crew of Marine One to fly. And so we're going back and forth to New York, and I said, you know, can I take my wife? Because I'm flying with the president of the helicopter crew. Can I take my wife? And he said, sir, you're the boss. You do anything you want. Mm -hmm. So Jean went to fly with us. She had a pilot's license, and I said, well, I'll do anything I want. And she fly the helicopter. So we mm -hmm. with her IC. <laughs> <laughs> so Jean got two hours of helicopter time. Of course, once a helicopter converts, you fly like a regular airplane. Then, in an air show in Maryland, there was a dirigible. And Jean had never been in a dirigible before. So she went up to the pilot and said, if I went home and made me some brownies, would you take me for a ride? <laughs> I said, sure. So she went home, made some brownies, and Diane and her went for a ride in the dirigible. She didn't get to fly it, though. <laughs> we bought her a Cessna 150 airplane, and she needed a place to fly. And that's how we ended up down here. In Washington, there's no way to fly. Everything is controlled. They're afraid to let you do anything. When you want to fly, the instructions are you turn right at that White House, and you <laughs> turn left at the metal building, and they control you. So we needed a place to fly, and we came down here. My next assignment in CIA was now, Jean was fully cleared when I went to work there. She needed a new military ID card. So I went to security. My wife needs a new ID card, no problem. She fill one in with a fictitious colonel signature. CIA. <laughs> she shows up at Bowling Air Force Base with this request for a new ID card. First question they ask, oh, what organization is this? Where's your husband work? Oh, I don't know. No, <laughs> What's his phone number? I don't know. <laughs> She's fully cleared. She finally, when she finally saw a Carpets on the floor. She said, Come on, he works at CIA. Oh, that will be safe. Okay. <laughs> Jean used to keep a, a garden out here. Animals love her. And a sparrow, a baby sparrow, landed and she <coughs> watered it with a hose and she threw it a, a worm. From then on, Jean was its mother. She had to come out every day, <laughs> eat worms or bugs, and feed this sparrow. It would chirp like crazy. She didn't look after him. We had cats, dogs, rabbits. Rats. Rats? Oh, yeah, we had a rat. Gerbils. Gerbils. What Squirrel. else? Squirrels. We had all kinds of animals. Jean was great for charities. Every day, the mailbox was that full. The mailbox, when the the mail people, when they get that much mail, they wrap them in rubber bands. Mm -hmm. I have the world supply of rubber bands. <laughs> <laughs> and Jean would do crossword puzzles in ink. She also played Scrabble. She was a world champion at Scrabble. And, anyways, she was fun and I will miss her. Would anybody like to say a few words now? Do you want to talk about the rest of the just in case anybody doesn't know, I am Alan Jean's little girl. <laughs> My name is Diane, and I moved to Nashville in 1985. And um, I have an outside voice, which I love dearly, uh, because I'm outside quite a bit. I just... When I get into the house, if I'm still yelling, remind me that I'm in the house. And there is just no way to sum up 55 years of sharing a mother's love. Several words come to mind. Intelligent, questioning, honest, commitment, laughter, tears, joy, accomplishment, sincerity, fairness, travel companion, Fisher person, volunteer, avid reader, scrabble meister, and of course private pilot. Which brings me to a private pilot story. Mom's flight instructor's name is Joe Susie. Never called Joe, never called Mr. Susie, always Joe Susie. 
1985, I moved to Nashville on one of my many visits to see Mom and Popsy. I only started calling Popsy Popsy probably after his grandchildren were born. I love the name. <laughs> it's my pet name for Popsy. <laughs> this time, when I came to visit, it was the fall and the leaves had already dropped from the trees. Popsy picked me up from the airport and as we were driving down the very long, long driveway to the big Tudor-style house that Popsy built around 1983-ish. While driving down this long driveway, it wasn't, it wasn't quite pitch dark yet, and I noticed a bunch of piles of leaves that, were, that we were passing. I verbalized to Popsy, who rakes the leaves and why were there so many piles? versus raking them all into one big pile and removing them. And Popsy said, oh, you know your mother. She raked them into piles, which in Morse code spells, when you're flying from above, hello, Joe Susie. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, get, I'll tell a Scrabble story, and then I'm going to close. Um, once when Mom was in the hospital, I knew she was lonely for Scrabble. I knew I would never win, but I thought, I will play a game of Scrabble. So I called her, I'm going to bring a Scrabble board, we're going to play Scrabble. The first seven letters I got, I spelled an entire word. I also got the first play, so I got triple score on the first play. So I lay out the letters and I go, Oh my God! And all of a sudden, all the nurses in the hospital <laughs> came running into the room. <laughs> and I saw, I thought, they said, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I had my inside voice. I had my outside voice inside. They scolded me. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> I also won that game of Scrabble. Ah. <laughs> Mom let me have it. It was great. I play very, very rarely, but when I do play, I do win sometimes, and it makes me very happy because I can chalk it all up to Mom's experience. Lastly, while I have the Airfield family attention, you all have been an enormous help to all of us, to Mom, to Popsy, to me, to David, to Mike, to our family, and I just want to say thank you so much. Words cannot express the support that you all have provided us and that you continue to provide us. And while I have your attention here today, you keep up with the goings-on in the family through Popsy, since I don't live out here. I'm an hour away. David's 30 minutes away. Popsy probably has said, oh, David and Diane are leaving, and they're leaving at the same time, and they're going to be gone a month. So during this time, while we're out having fun out of the country in Thailand and China and Laos and Cambodia, <laughs> tough life, if you don't mind my asking another favor, please check on him. <laughs> Get him out. Make sure he's doing okay. Make sure the, guard is, the yard is cut and the trash gets removed and that he's doing all right. I, I sincerely appreciate it so much. And thank you so much for coming out today. I miss Mom. Words will just never say. And... You get totally caught off guard when you're talking to your dad and all of a sudden you hear this voice come out of your mouth that is not your normal voice. I hear my mother's voice and she's saying exactly the same thing to dad that she would always say. It's wherever you put it last. I didn't move it. Look again. And the only thing that I say different than my mom is look with your eyes not your mouth. <laughs> I love you. Come on. I love you. Would anybody else like to say anything? Oh, we got a couple more. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Jason. 
I'm the eldest grandchild of this very unique individual. <laughs> um, there's a lot of things I remember about my grandmother. I remember she, like he said, loved animals. I had, in my mind, every time I saw her, was cats. Cats everywhere. The, the proverbial old cat woman, in a way. Um, I also remember her coming up with unique food choices for me as a child, such as uh, like pancakes with ice cream. Great combo. <laughs> <laughs> Not so great for the parents when they had to bring the sugars up child back home. <laughs> but out of everything I remember about my grandmother, I remember that she always did surprise me. And there's one very specific story I can only think of. It's just one. Um, it was my 16th birthday. I came out here to the hangar to spend it with everybody. And I opened various presents, I have cake, and I've been get one final present, this little bag from my grandmother. I go, what is it? She's like, open it, you'll see. I said, like, okay. I go, alright. I open it, and I see it's a book. I'm like, alright. And I pick it up, I take one look at it. I look back, I look at it again, I put it back in the bag. I stand there, and my mom and dad are looking at me, they're like, what's wrong? I was like, uh, I don't want to show this to you. <laughs> like, no, no, come on, what is it? That exact expression every 16-year-old gets on their face when they know they're about to say or do something that they're like, I'm going to regret this thing. <laughs> I pull out, and my grandmother, my, my lovely, wonderful grandmother, has presented me with a book, World's Dirtiest, Grossest, and Most Vile Jokes, <laughs> Volume 3. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, my dad and my mom are chuckling, and I'm just, I'm like, yeah, yeah, have a good time. And I start putting away, and my grandmother the book, and goes, no, 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 read us one. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing quite like being put on the spot to try to find in a book, especially one with a title such as that. One joke that you feel comfortable in telling not only around your parents, your little brother, and your grandparents. <laughs> but that's that's the thing. I always love my grandma. I love her sense of humor. And like I said, I love the fact she could always surprise me. No matter what. And that's all the words I've got. Thank you. And Jason's our Air Force rep. He's in the Air Force now. Oh. Oh. Anybody else? Who are you? Some of you know me from the air park and around about locally, and some from Washington, D.C. Um, the rest, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> what to say. But anyway, my She's name is almost daughter. My name is Sandra, and I first met Jean um, 30 years ago when she came to her and Al came to England on vacation. Jean wanted to fly into the grounds of a stately home to see um, they have a museum there. And three or four times a year they fly the vintage aircraft. So of course she came to England and wanted to go there. So of course I'm a young flight instructor at the local school, building hours to, you know, become more professional pilot. And obviously it's my job to convince Al and Jean that not just to rent an aircraft, but to hire the instructor with the aircraft <laughs> <laughs> and fly to the stately home, <laughs> which obviously they did, because then was our friendship was born, and for 30 years they have welcomed me into their home, and I was very, very glad to meet Jean, who another woman that I had not met ever before, another woman with the same passion for aviation. And we shared many stories and many years talking about things like that. Um, throughout the last 30 years, Jean has always made me welcome in her home. She was a source of inspiration and encouragement to me, both in aviation and life in general. When I told her I had never read a book, for pleasure. She <coughs> said about fixing that. <laughs> so she joined me to the library 
um, for our book home that would start me reading and eventually become another joy, source of joy in my life that will last me the rest of my life. Um, she also tried to get me into Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> she taught me many words like what gubernatorial means, <laughs> <laughs> which means it's not a good idea to learn to play Scrabble. <laughs> encourage me, um, listen to me, she taught me many things including American recipes, so people <laughs> would eat my food, <laughs> she taught me about plants that would grow here, and many other useful things to know when living in a foreign country, and always with her unique sense of humour. Jean was a good friend and a confidant, and a surrogate mum to me when I needed one. I thank all the Klein family <laughs> for welcoming me into the family and for sharing Jean with me, and especially Diane, who quietly and attentively showed tremendous courage and great love in taking care of her mum when it became time for her to leave this life. And in making today a successful and a happy celebration of that life. I am honoured to have known you. Sandra's interesting. She's a degree nurse. You were on a hot transplant team, and she decided she wanted to go fly airplanes. <laughs> so, what happened when they flew into the when you flew into the, the estate? Oh, they, it's it's called the Shuttleworth Collection, and it's in the stately home and no. have a museum. But who you flew? Who flew? She who flew? flew. She did. But I did. Well, mm -hmm. I'm on the radio as. Because we are flying from Heathrow airspace, mm -hmm. it's very busy. Uh -huh. We have to talk a lot of Heathrow, um, Air Force, Farnborough, a lot of radio. So I did the radio while she did the flying. Uh -huh. When we got to the <laughs> Shuttleworth, there's no radio because everything biplanes mm -hmm. and you know balsa wood aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody just diving in and landing <laughs> in the garden, and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Look out the window. So oh, she's now an airline pilot. <laughs> but if anybody needs some nursing. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody? Yep. Oh. Come on, Dr. Candy. This is Dr. Candy. He was Jean's breathing doctor, lung specialist, and mine also. And he's a great doctor, but don't tell him. <laughs> uh, just going to say to you folks about
But with her, it really touched me. So for weeks after that, I had no thought she didn't know. But he sensed it because the day that she passed, she was saying, are you going to be okay? I remember that and I was saying, yeah, I'll be okay. You know, I've got to be the strong one here. But for weeks after, I really, really, really forget it. And uh, the reason is this. I moved to Lebanon in 2006. I'm originally from Nigeria. I've lived in England, practiced in England. I was in Michigan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody? 